everyone, this is Mrs. Griffin with the Unit 1 Lesson 5 video. We're going to continue talking about parallel lines, and we're also going to add in the idea of having auxiliary lines in a picture. And so what you need to be able to do is solve problems about angle pairs formed by transversals with multiple sets of parallel lines or auxiliary lines. So we're going to step up the game on parallel lines. All right, the opening exercise you're going to do on your own. We're going to start in the notes here. So an auxiliary line, the word auxiliary... Um, is, it means helper, so this is going to be a line that's added to a figure which helps to solve a problem. Usually it's going to extend a line that's already there, or it's going to be another parallel that is added into a picture to help solve a problem. And so if we look at the one here, what we have is we have two sets of parallel lines, and then neither of these is a transversal. So our choices are to either extend one of these transversals, or to add in another parallel right through the bend, okay? And if we do that, then we create two different parallel line situations. We can refer to this with this and that transversal in one part of the problem, and then we can use this in the other part of the problem. And if you can look at the yellow, what we've actually created, I'm going to highlight it in green right now, is a... Um, a Z shape and remember that Z shape is the alternate interior so what would happen is this 41 would also go here because alternate interior angles are congruent okay and then if we look at the blue the same thing's going to happen here okay we have another Z shape so this angle 35 would also be in that position because alternate angle interior angles are congruent and then if you look where the W was it was here originally Angle W is all of this together. So if we were to put the 41 and the 35 together, we would get angle W, and that would be 76 degrees. Okay. All right. So if we look at a bunch of these, we can do that sort of scenario. So in number one on the next page, we're looking for angle I, which is out here. So I'm going to draw in the transverse or the second third parallel line that goes in here. And I'm going to basically split this into two separate problems. So I'm going to look here at this set of parallel lines with this transversal. And I'm going to start with that. So the first thing I notice is that I can correspond this 117 down to this position. Remember, that means to copy and paste it, to slide it down. And then I see that I have a linear pair here. So if I do 180 minus 117, I will get 63. I'm going to do a similar thing with the second parallel line picture. So these parallel lines and this transversal. And I can do again, take that 129 and slide it up to this position and put the 129 here. Okay, and then again I have a linear pair, so if I do 180 minus 129, I'll get 51. And again, that angle I, remember, was all of this together. So if I take the 63 and the 51 and I add them up, I'm going to get 114. All right, same idea on number two. You have your two parallel lines, but your transversal is bent. When that happens, right through the bend, put another parallel line for the other two and separate it into two problems. The top parallel line situation with this transversal, we're going to start there. Or you could start on the bottom with the two parallel lines here and this transversal. Okay, remember that that 96 has been split up, so we're almost going to ignore it right now. The 96 is that total here. That whole thing is 96. All right, now, if I start on the bottom, I see this 130 here. It's an obtuse, and what I have here is an acute one. Those are different. So remember, that's your same side interior. They're on the same side of the transversal, and those are supplements. So they have to add up to 180. So up here, this would be 50 degrees to add to 180 with the third, 130. Okay. And remember that whole thing was 96. So if I do 96 minus 50, because together those two small angles have to be uh, 96 degrees, I'll see that this one is 46. And then if I look at the angle R, I see this Z shape going on here. That means they're alternate interior and they would be congruent, so this would also be 46 degrees. So we have a few different situations going on in this picture. 
the Z shape to finish it off, and the same side interior to start it. Okay. Number three, if I look, I have two parallels. This time my transversal is bent twice. So I'm going to throw two extra parallel lines through it. I'm gonna go one this way, and one through this bend. Okay, and what I've just split up this 80, and I've split up that 310, so we're just gonna pay attention to that. And we have a bunch going on. I'm gonna start with where the numbers are. So if I look here at this parallel line, I have the 110 here, and then down here, remember that's not 80, the 80 got split. This and this, those are same side interior. Those are gonna be supplements. So this part would be 70. And then remember that whole thing was 80, so this little piece in here has to be 10. Now, let's see if I can find any kind of relationship that will help me here. Um, I like the Z shape that I can see here. So if I look at that, this would also be 10 because those are alternate interior. And then if I look at this, this 310 and then this 10, I've only got a little bit left in here. And remember, that's angles around a point. and they add up to 360, so 310 and 10 is 320, this has to be 40. And then I can finish it off doing another alternate interior to get the 40 here as well. All right. Four is a little simpler because there's only one bend, so we're going to draw that parallel line straight through the bend. Remember, you want it to look parallel to the original two parallel lines. Okay. And we've split up the H in here. H is both of those together. And we split it up into two problems. I've got these parallels with this transversal. And if I do that, I see I have an obtuse and acute. Those are same side interiors. They make kind of like a box or like half of a parallelogram shape. That's going to be 180. So if I do 180 minus 162, I am going to get 18. And then for the bottom, I've got that same thing going on here. I've got this acute one and this obtuse one. They're on the same side of the transversal, so those are also supplements. So 180 minus 98 is 82. And then if I put these together to get H, 82 and 18 is 100. Okay, so when you have parallel lines but your transversal is bent, throw another one in there and split it up into two different problems. It does even help some people to completely cover up with their hands one set of parallels at a time. So where I highlighted in yellow, some people will actually cover that whole thing up with their hand and only look at the top section. And then when it comes to doing the bottom section, they'll do the same thing. They'll cover this all up so that they can only see the bottom section and it might help isolate the different parallel line properties. Um, so here again we have a bent transversal. I'll throw the extra parallel in there and then if you want you can cover this part up and just look at the top part where I'm going to highlight it in blue and if you look that 51 slides in the top right slide it down that would also be 51 and then you can cover that up and look at the bottom section. So we have here and here and here. So if you need to cover up this top section here and just look at the green, that might assist you. And then I see a Z shape here. So this is my alternate interior and that would also be 33. And then angle one was if I were to put these two together. So if I take your 51 and your 33 and add them together, I'm going to get 84. Okay, same idea here. Make another parallel straight through the bend and isolate it. So if I look at my 129, I see that I have same side in between the parallels. So those are same side interior. That's going to be 180. So 180 minus 129 is 51. And then if I look here, that transversal in these parallels, I see the 84. If I slide it up the transversal to this point, it would be in this spot, and so that would also be 84. And then I can put these together, 84 and 51, to get 135. Okay, so that's your corresponding here, sliding up. 
All right, number seven, last one like this. Uh, we're going to put the nether line straight through. Remember, we've just split up the 75 that was here. Um, and we're going to split it up into two problems. So if I look at the 37, I can correspond it down. I can slide it down that transversal like this. Okay, and I can put the 37 in this corner as well. Remember that total was 75, so if I take 75 and subtract 37, this bottom section would be 38. And then I can do the same idea. I have here this angle that I can slide down, and it would be in the same spot as the x, so it would also be 38. Okay, another thing that happens is that we have multiple sets of parallel lines. So if I look at these parallels here, I've got uh, two sets. So I'm going to start with a number. Let's start with the 68. It's on this parallel and this transversal. This is parallel to this one. So if I slide down the transversal, 68 here, slide it down, it would move to here. Okay, and I have a linear pair here, so those would all add up to 180. So if I add those up and subtract from 180, I'm going to get 18. Okay, now for Q, if I look, Q is made by this parallel and this transversal. So the one parallel to it is here. If I look at Q and I slide that down, it would land here. So it is equal to the 94 by corresponding. All right, and this one, we're talking about angle 3 and angle 2. So let's look for the relationship there. There's 3. Here's 2. If you look, that's a Z shape, so they are congruent. So that would also be 125 degrees. All right, number 10. Uh, if I look here, I've got a bunch going on but multiple transversals. So if I look at this parallel with this transversal, I can see that I have a Z shape, which would put a 60 here. That's your alternate interior. And then these are a linear pair. So 180 minus 60 is 120. Okay, if you look at number 11, we're talking about angle 5 and angle 7. That's these parallels and this transversal. Those are corresponding. You can see they're in the same position, bottom left. So they're going to be equal. And if I solve them, I'm going to get 25. On number 12, if I look at angle 4 and angle 8, this one appears to be acute, this one appears to be obtuse, and this is the parallel line set they're on. That's your alternate exterior, or same side exterior angles. Those are supplements. So if I add them together, I'm going to solve. They'd equal 180, so I'm going to add the 25 to both sides. And then I'll divide by 8, and I am going to get a decimal, but that's okay. All right, if I look at number 13, I have this parallel line set, and I have two different transversals. If I look at this transversal, I'm talking about this angle, which appears to be obtuse, and this one, which appears to be acute. So those are your same side interior. Those are supplements. So if I add them together, they're going to equal 180, and I'll get y is 20. And then if I look at the parallel lines with a different transversal, the other one. I've got the same thing going on here. These have to add up to 180. So 5x plus 90 has to equal 180. Subtract 90 from both sides and then divide by 5 and you'll get 18. All right, on number 14, we have only we have two sets of parallel lines. These are parallel cut by this transversal. Okay, if I look at that, and if you want to extend it, you kind of can, this one appears to be obtuse, and this one appears to be acute. That's your same side exterior, they're 180, so they have to add up to 180, that makes y 40. And then if you look at the other pair of parallels, this pair, and this transversal, you'll see that they're in the same position. This here, if I slide it down, would land here. So that means that the 2x plus 10 has to equal the 40, they have to be congruent. So subtract 10 from both sides, divide by 2, and x is 15. Okay, for number 15 and 16, we're going to do them together in class, so I will see you then.